<laughs> and it's like the chance is on a journey back to that. I truly believe that I, there is a hunger. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not speaking against the church, but I, with my time with pastors all across the land, I almost, almost feel that the pastors have reached the point where they've, they've, where they're done doing. They've reached the point where they've said, "God, this is yours. God, take over." Letting God to invade. Letting God to invade the situation. That's what happened with David. He said, God, yeah. I, I tried to impress you with all my wealth. I tried to impress you with all my royalty. I'm getting back to being the stinky shepherd that I was. And then he became so undignified. And later on we, re we read that his wife did not like that she was not impressed. And there was a curse on her life with that. I don't want to step into that. But I like what he said. He said, and I will be even more undignified for this. He said, I'm ready. I'm ready to be further more. I'm ready to lower myself further than this. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's almost like he was saying, I'm ready to give up my, my kingdom for this. I'm ready to give up my throne for this. I don't care about the throne. I don't care about the position anymore. It changes. It changes the way we look at things, doesn't it? I want to I I look at one more passage of scripture. It's in Exodus 33, which really further, further just completes what we've been looking on today. Exodus 33. Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up from here. You and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give. Verse 2. And I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the insecticides, and the pesticides. <laughs> Verse 3. Go, go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst. What a, what a powerful passage of scripture. Here's God telling Moses, you're going to be the deliverer of a, of a word that's going on for generation after generation after generation. And Moses knew the heritage that he belonged to. And God introduced himself. He said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then there was almost a heritage that was being passed on to Moses. There was almost a mantle from that generation, from those generations, from those fathers being passed on to him. And here was he. God was telling him, I'm going to give you, I'm going to make you the person who's going to do that. I, I know you've struggled. I know you're, you're close to burnout. I know that, I know that you've got such, you, you've got such a bunch of people, you know, with you and all that. He said, I'm just going to, I'm just going to let you go into the land. And he says, I'm going to send out my angel before you and drive out and kill all these different people to get rid of all these issues. Get rid of, I mean, it's, it's going to be a breakthrough angel. It's going to be a breakthrough anointing. It's going to break all that off. But I like what the Lord says, that, but my presence will not go with you. And it's so interesting. And I think about all the things that happens that, that we can reach a point where not everything that we see that's so great in our eyes is approved by heaven. And I was meditating on the scripture and it just showed me such an eternal perspective. Such an eternal perspective on even ministry. That the ministries that sometimes we might endorse so much might not be the ones that's being watched on screen in heaven. That God watches that which chases His presence. That God is where His presence is. He will allow angels because He does not want to break His word. He, does not, he did not want to break His covenant. He did not want to break His word. And God said, you know what? I give Abraham this promise. I can't deal with this anymore. Let's just get rid of it. Let's just get it out of the way. You know? It's almost that way. And he said, I'm going to send an angel. We're going to get rid of it. Don't worry about Moses. You've got your promotion coming. You know, <laughs> Don't worry about all that. I'm just going to take care of you. But my presence, but here's the condition, Moses. My presence is not going to go. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You know what's the funny part? This is what Moses says, verse 15. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. What a powerful scripture. Moses said, you know, in the eyes. I mean, I, I could also, also imagine, you, you're talking about the Egyptian king, the Pharaoh, who had such great technology to find out what was going on. He's been checking up on Moses, by the way. There's almost a non-verbal warfare within the mind of Moses and Pharaoh, even though it's been many years. There's almost a destination that was promised for Moses. 
And so in the eyes of the world, maybe Moses failed. Because he never reached his destination. He never made it to the promised land, by the way. He died before they reached there. But you know what? I believe, I believe what happened was because Moses never, Moses never saw the promised land. Moses never followed the angel. He followed the presence. And because he followed the presence, it sustained him for an end time ministry. In the book of Revelation, we read about Moses and Elijah. That, that, that mantle, that anointing, that Moses' calling is going to be restored. And, and in the book of Revelation, it, this, this, this decision that he made has sustained his calling. He did not go through death. His death, his body was taken up. Yeah. Because God said, this is a man that I want. I want to continue using him. Because it's hard to reproduce something like this. And it's almost like, what are you seeking? Are you seeking the approval of man? Or are you seeking the approval of his presence? And you know, I've, I've just, God's just been dealing that with my life. And I've been saying, I've been saying, I've been thinking about um, just the presence of God. And, and Lord, I said, I don't want, I don't want, if, 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 if it's going to be an angel that's going to take me to the international platforms of worldwide ministry, I don't want it. If it's an angel that's going to take me to the TV station to broadcast me all around the world, give me a good face, give me a good tithes and offering, I don't want it. If your presence goes, then I want it. And that's been my prayer, that's been my heart. And so we always cry out for the presence of God, but there's a price that demands of it. There are things that we break and we need to die to. And you know, you might be thinking, you're talking of the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? What about the time when judgment came in the New Testament? In Acts, Acts 5, we hear about two, two couples that began it, that sold their land and tried to give some of the, the money to the church, but kept half of it. Now, God did not, the Lord never said to give the land. They volunteered. They made a whole demonstration in the yeah. public. They come, came up in front. The wife and the husband were weeping, crying, wailing. And, and Peter might have gone up to them and asked, what happened? Oh, we want to give you all our land. They made the whole presence. They made this whole display in the glory of God. That which you commit to in the glory of God, be careful to submit to. Otherwise, don't do it. I'd rather not do it than committing to something and then not submitting to what you've said. And they made this whole demand of it. And then after that, they kept the property. They kept bits of the land to themselves. So here they had such a good display in front of the church. They had their trophies in their shelf with the church that I've given them. And they've got such a public, uh, uh, such a public awareness. The public knows them for all, all the stuff that they've done and all the contributions to the church. But yet at the same time, they were living a life of compromise. Yeah. And what happened? The presence came and took them away. Yeah. Yeah. Killed them. And so it comes down to... Are we living still in the days of the book of Acts? Why aren't people dying today? If they're lying in the glory of God. And you might ask, is it, is it that the power of God just sort of went down? I'll tell you why. In the days of David, when Uzzah touched the ark, he died. But in the days of Eli, when Eli's sons committed adultery in front of the ark, none of them died. Why? Because the glory of God was removed. That's right. Mm. That's right. And, but there are coming days, I tell you. There are coming days. We've seen, we've seen increase. We've seen miracles. We've seen miracles all around the world. We've seen great ministries. Just young men, of, men and women of God just mushrooming all over the world. God's sort of setting, setting the standard. He's setting the standard for what the first century church is. But with that standard, there's also going to be coming a, a release of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know, there's been, a, there's been, I've been meeting young people all the time, and they've been saying, Alvin, I want to see angels. Because there's almost been, been a thing of, you know, I want to see angels, I want to see visions. You know what Book of Psalm tells me? The, the, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear Him. Start fearing God. Yeah. Start thinking about the glory of God. Start, start, start having the heart of just being so, so understanding. I'm not talking about... Getting, 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 you know, all scared up and saying, I can't approach God, but an awareness that God, your presence is holy. I'm careful of what I speak. I'm careful of what I do. 